Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you believe it? It's seven days and it's Christmas Eve. The, the season of, of giving is upon us. You guys get your Christmas shopping done? <laughs> no? I, I used to procrastinate so bad, I would be Christmas shopping on December 23rd. That is a big mistake. Half the shelves are already clean from uh, other procrastinating people. But nowadays I do it more Black Friday. That's kind of the, the golden time for it. But it is the season of giving. It is the season of, of gift giving, of charity, of, of kindness. And every time this season rolls around, I find I encounter a challenge. Maybe you can relate to this. When I want to give gifts to people I love and care about, I want to give gifts that mean something. I don't want to give a gift that just screams, I'm only doing this because it's an obligation. Right? You know those kinds of gifts, right? You buy them in two minutes, you slap a card on it, you ship it out, done with that person, now to the next. No, I want to give something that, that means something, that is thoughtful, that, that knows I'm thinking of them, that I love them and care for them. But this is really, really hard because you basically have to read people's minds. Well, you can either ask them what do you want for Christmas, but the surprise is half the fun. So you got to think, okay, what would they want? What would she need? What don't they have already? It can be hard, but that's what makes the gift-giving process kind of worth it and fun. Because here's just the thing. When you give gifts like that, the gift itself, does it really matter? <laughs> does the price tag associated with that gift really matter? No. Because when you give gifts like that, you're not just giving a material thing. You're giving your heart. You're showing that you love them and care about them. And the same should be true in our financial giving. <laughs> uh, I don't talk about this topic very often. I mean, this is only the second time in a year and a half I've been here. Because I'm very wary when we talk about finances. There are some pastors that will never shut their mouth about financial giving, right? Every time you walk in the church, it's, it's God expects you to give that. You give this when you're a bad Christian over and over and over and over and over. It's kind of disgraceful. But I have found that the opposite problem can be true too, where pastors never talk about giving. Why? Maybe because, oh, they, they don't want to offend anybody, or maybe they feel like the church is no place for talk like that. Phooey! Nonsense! How many of you would say the finances are a big part of your life? Uh, almost, if not all of us. And I say over and over in church, right, that our faith touches every part of our lives, right? And so should our faith impact our giving, our finances? Absolutely. I have had one-on-one -on -one conversations with many of you about finances and faith, right? Some of you who are blessed with abundance and some of you who can barely get through the next month. Our finances are a big part of our life and God has something to say to us about that. So in a season of giving, why don't we hear what God has to say? Well, actually, let's start with what God doesn't have to say. God does not want your giving to be an obligation. We just talked about that, right? When you give Christmas gifts, oh, just because I have to, because it's the Christmas season, right? Uh, obligation, how are we saved again? What do Lutherans say? We are saved by what? Grace. Can you buy God's grace? Is there a price tag on God's grace? No, it is a free gift. There's, there's no big meter over our heads to say, we don't give this much, we better start sweating because we're not going to make it to heaven. No, the joy of the gospel is that salvation is free. Neither is our giving some sort of, and pastors like to talk like sweat this way all the time, like it's some sort of spiritual investment. You put a little bit in the offering plate and God's going to bless you with so many worldly blessings. You've heard people talk like this before. Uh, it's all over the place. But if we actually look at what the Bible says, what does God promise for those who believe? Uh, maybe that life isn't going to be 100% happy all the time. That we might be persecuted. That we might suffer in this life. God's promises for us are not about today, are they? It's about when. 
the forever after, the, the life to come, eternal life. God talks about giving. He talks this way. Do you remember the story of the poor widow? Jesus is in the temple, and he sees a long line of people and a lot of rich people wearing glamorous clothes, and they're dropping big sums of money into the offering box. And at the very end of the line, who is there but a poor widow with ragged clothes, and she drops two copper pennies in, an insignificant amount. But it's for her that Jesus says, what? She has given more than all the others. Why would Jesus say that? Because the rich might have given out of obligation. Because the church tells me to. Because maybe it will make God like me more. But the widow gave her heart. When she put those two copper coins in, she showed that she loved and trusted God above all things. Brothers and sisters, in our giving, if we give as an obligation, we might as well not even give at all because it's not doing us a lick of good. But rather, our giving, the way we manage our finances, should be a way we worship God. Yes, a way we worship God. Because when we give, we kind of put our money where our mouth is, so to speak, right? We love God, trust Him, not just with our words, but with our deeds as well. We are thankful for Him. We praise God in our worship with our giving. And notice, I never gave you a number, did I? Because it goes first full circle. Is it about the gift itself? Is it about the price tag on the gift? No, it's about our hearts. I, again, I've spoken to many of you who have a, an abundance of blessings, and so I encourage you, give much, not as an obligation, but of thanksgiving. And I've spoken to many of you who can barely rub two nickels together, of which I say to you, give a little, not as a burden, but in trust in our God. In this way, we worship our God and glorify Him. We give cheerfully. You know, the Bible says this, God loves a cheerful giver, not out of obligation or duty, but because He knows that we trust in Him and that we truly believe it's not about life today. It's about eternity to come. So brothers and sisters, in this holiday season, don't forget to give your heart to your family, to your friends, to the people around you and your gift giving and the time you spend with them. And don't forget to give your heart to God. For how much has our God given us? <laughs> More than we could ever ask for. His Son for the promise of eternal life and paradise to come. Man, if more pastors talked about giving this way, right? It would be a pretty sweet gig, huh? In the holy name of Jesus, amen. We continue with our offering.